Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, back with another video, and I've been thinking a lot about raiding, right? Legion is almost here, and my brain is 100% on the raid team. Now, that's not to say there's a ton of work that we need to do to get there, but there was something that I read online the other day that really caught my attention. It's the difference between motivation and discipline. And I started to think, okay, how can motivation work in a raid team? How can discipline work in a raid team? Well, come to find out, motivation is something that is almost destructive, right? And we're going to talk about that today. And how discipline can be a really beneficial thing for your raid team. And I don't mean discipline as in um, reprimanding somebody for doing something wrong. No, I'm talking about discipline as in creating a system of... Uh, of actions and reactions within your team that you follow on a daily basis, disciplining yourself to be good raiders. Now, if you want to get something done, there's two ways to go about it. Uh, as a raid leader, I feel that part of my job is to motivate myself and my team. Now, this is uh, a very easy thing to uh, fall back upon, motivating yourself and your team, because what you're doing is basically channeling emotion, emotions, right? You're channeling an emotional state. And what we're trying to do is use that emotional state to complete a task. So say you've been wiping on a boss all day and you're at the point where you're at the breaking point. Okay, and you say to your officers, all right, we need to dig down, we need to buckle down and get this done. And you give a nice little two-minute pep talk, right? You're motivating yourself and your team getting their emotional state elevated to complete a task. Now, this is good, but there's a better way to go about it. And what we're going to talk about is cultivating discipline. What we're doing is separating outward functions from moods and feelings, and thereby circumnavigating the problem by consistently improving them. Okay, that was a lot of jargon, but let's break it down. So we're basically separating the mood and feeling aspect of getting something done and thinking of something as a system. Now that's not to say everything should be robotronic, but if you fall back on your discipline, you know all of the things that need to get done. If you look at a lot of the top raid guilds, you watch their streams, you watch their videos, you'll notice that there isn't a lot to be said. You watch them, they play their roles, they do their stuff, they kill bosses. Well, why is that a thing? Well, if you look at the way that they play their characters, if you look at their Warcraft logs, you'll notice that a lot of it is near perfect. Top tier guilds are near perfect. They're functioning at peak capacity, at peak efficiency. So they're not having to motivate their players. They're not having to give pep talks. They're not having to buckle down and say, guys, that, but that was like 200. I want to get this done right now. You know, let's, let's go, get pumped up. They don't need to do that because what they're doing is relying on their discipline, relying on their consistency and their efficiency to get things done. So very different schools of thought, motivation and discipline. Now, discipline is something that takes a lot of time, right? We don't want to wait. We want to start right now. The pre-patch is the perfect time to build your team back up into fighting shape. So as we get closer to Legion launch, people will start coming back. You may be running a couple more HFCs to get your team back in fighting shape. You want to start cultivating that discipline right now. Train to be in Olympic form now. Don't wait until you're in Olympic form to start training. And this happens a lot in guilds, including our guild, Exiled Power, on Arthas. When we were raiding, we were constantly trying to figure out what beat we were marching to, how to form our leadership, how to form our raid team. We were trying to be in Olympic form at every single point. Well, we needed to train to be in Olympic form, okay? HFC came around and we were getting there, but we were still trying to be in Olympic form. No, we needed to start training for Olympic form back when the expansion came out. Unfortunately, that's not the way the world works sometimes, and we have to start at a foundation and build up from there. So start training now, guys. Start training to be in Legion Olympic form right now. And how can we do that? So what, what can we do? Well, we have to cut the link between feelings and actions, okay? When we're in a raid, your adrenaline's pumping, especially on a first-time kill, things are elevated. What we need to do is suppress that and allow the actions of our discipline 
to get us through. Let the emotions come out after. A perfect example of this is the first time we killed Mythic Archimonde. All of our emotions are high, everything is going crazy, we kill the boss, and then boom, a flood of emotions comes out. What we need to do moving forward is rely on our discipline, rely on our skills, and cultivate a solid work ethic to get things done. Now, if you watch our kill video, which I'll put below here, if you watch the end of that video, you'll notice that there's a lot more talking. Things are definitely getting elevated. It was not the cleanest kill in the world. Far from it. But what happened was we were letting our emotions overtake our discipline. Now, I am surrounded by amazing raiders. We do a great job being the only progressive 2 gay guild on Arthas, and we have a great time doing it. But because we're not constantly refining our form, we sometimes fall over that line from discipline into emotion. And look, it's a work in progress. It's going to be a work in progress for us for a very long time. That being said, we should all be working on that right now. So, what can your team do? What can we do together? How do we make this better? How do we cross the line from a emotional guild, a motivational guild, excuse me, to a disciplined guild? Well, we have to establish good rating habits. And this is as simple as being prepared with potions, enchants, gear, being on time, and following the instructions of your raid leadership, right? If they say show up at 8.45, we're going to do this, this, and this, and you show up at 9 o'clock and just kind of have no idea what's going on, well, you're effectively cutting and effectively stopping what the good rating habits are. Other people see that. It's a chain reaction. It's a really, really bad thing. If there's one moocher in the guild who's never pulling their weight on trash, always asking for potions, last minute, not coming to raids enchanted, that is very cancerous. And we don't want that in the raid. It's a toxic environment. Okay, We want to get all of that toxic out of the raid by being prepared and establishing good raiding habits. Now, part of having good raiding habits is, part, is having good leadership. But not just any leadership. You need to have effective leadership. You have to find a method that works for your team that allows you to communicate effectively and create some system of making decisions. Now, Exiled Power all the way through Warlords of Draenor was trying to figure out their leadership situation. For a while, I was just a raider, and then I was an officer, and then it somehow morphed into me being the raid leader. Well, I would do the research as well as some of my other officer cohorts, but I would effectively lead the team during the raid. This often put a lot of pressure on me to make sure that everything was locked up, and sometimes, and I'll be honest with you guys, that didn't always happen. Now, it's my job as the raid leader to make sure that the raid is moving forward. In my mind, that is my only job, move the raid forward. So what we're doing in Legion is delegating a little bit more responsibility in a council type environment. So I'll be raid leading with Sang, who you've seen in a few other videos, and Republic. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to say, okay, Sang, I need you to focus on this, this, and this, and I need you to, say, call out some of these mechanics, organize these groups, do, oh, excuse me, do something other than what I'm already doing in the raid. And then it allows me to turn to my left and say, Sean, okay, I need you to do this, this, and this, research this, figure out what's going to work for our team. It's a way of delegating responsibilities to your leadership. And what that's going to do, guys, is that's going to allow us in raid to be more efficient. But it has to be a method that works for your guild. You can't just say, okay, this is going to work because Kodiak said it. No, that's not true at all. You need to find a way to work with your team and figure out a raid environment that works for you. Now, in my opinion, you have to be selfless. Raiding is not about you. It's about your team. There's a lot of the times, and this gets under my skin really bad, when my guildmates will talk about meters and loot. The two things I absolutely hate. I don't mind looking at logs, figuring out, say, if there's an issue with something, but if we're constantly talking about being on top of the meters and the loot, that sets a bad precedent in the guild. Rating is about being selfless. And if you're a leader in a guild, you have to be twice as selfless. You have to be thinking about moving your team forward at all times. And you have to do this, unfortunately, by sometimes separating your emotions with your actions. And that's part of the deal. 
you don't always have to be liked in a rating environment, but you have to move the team forward. Now, if you're not moving the team forward and you're making bad decisions and emotional decisions, well, then we have a problem. I know that sometimes we often think that we're making a right decision, but you need to have an effective leadership team and open lines of communication with your raters to say, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try it this way a few times. If it doesn't work, we'll readjust. But they have to trust you to be able to make the right decisions. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it forever. WoW is unlike anything else, okay? Online gaming is unlike anything else. It's not work. Okay, we pretend there's a chain of command. We say, okay, we have recruits, members, raid members, mythic raiders, officers, guildmaster, however you, your guild does it. There is a chain of command. But nothing dictates that we have to care about that, right? If you don't follow the chain of command at work, well, you'll most likely get fired. If you don't follow the chain of command in your guild, well, there's no hard and fast ramifications for doing that. So... This puts a lot of pressure on leadership, leading by example and always leading. The more you lead by example with effective leadership, the more people in the bottom of that chain of command see that the leaders are putting the efficient time and energy into making the guild a success, making the raid team a su success. Now, there's a few other things that go into this and what we can do to push ourselves to be more disciplined. Okay, we have to hold each other accountable. I'm not saying do this in an ineffective way and a nasty way, but I'm saying do this in a way where, say you set up whispers or say you have group chats or however you do it, where you're holding each other accountable. Say, look, uh, so I'll use, for instance, the hunters in our guild. So it's me, Kodiak. Uh, we have a hunter named Rennie and a hunter named Waking Demons. If I look after the raid nights over and I say, okay, hmm, there's something that I'm doing that the other two hunters aren't doing. How can we have a discussion about this? Well, we've set up a line of communication in our Discord to say, look, this is what I'm doing effectively. It's clearly working, looking at the logs. So maybe you guys should try this. I think you'll see better results. So we have to hold each other accountable, and we have to create an environment where we can feel comfortable holding people accountable. And that's, that takes time, okay? That does not happen overnight. If I was a new person in a guild, exiled power wasn't a thing, and I said, Oh man, you guys, you're not doing this right. You got to do exactly how I'm doing it. No one's going to no one's going to look at you as a leader and somebody that's going to help the guild, especially if you're coming in hot like that. So we need to feel like we're in an environment. We need to have open lines of communication that allow us to hold each other accountable. Now, speaking to that, we need to know where the line is and when people are crossing it. So, as a leader, I'm often thinking about this imaginary line. Okay, where does my role as a raid leader stop and the role of a mythic raider take over? And when am I crossing a line and when are raiders crossing a line? It's a very tricky thing. It's a very fluid thing, but we need to be cognizant of that. Okay, if there's an issue, we need to think of it not emotionally, but disciplined, being disciplined and dealing and addressing these issues in an effective way. So Unfortunately, there's no rules for handling any types of situations. My best advice to you is to just handle the situation as soon as possible. Issues that linger often cause problems, especially in an environment like World of Warcraft where uh, whispers run abound, we have discord, we have all sorts of ways of venting our frustrations to other people. You want to make sure as a leader or as a raider that you're really being cognizant and keying in on these issues. Now, I'm not saying every guild has a ton of issues, but every guild has issues. There's no denying that. You look at the best guilds in the world and they break apart all the time because there are issues that aren't addressed or not addressed in an effective way. So having some foresight, how can we get on the same page? Well, sometimes if you look at other guilds, the recruitment process isn't exactly efficient. Now, recruiting isn't an overnight process, but what you can do is refine your process to target like-minded people. If I say for Exiled Power that we are a two-day guild and we're a two-day progressive guild, I'm not going to be looking for people that want to raid five nights a week at a very hardcore level. That is not the right person for our guild. But if I'm finding somebody that says is maybe wanting to step out of a casual role into a more mythic role, and they have the skills to back it up. Well, now I'm looking at somebody that's a little more like-minded. Now, like-mindedness is something that's very hard to key in on, just like if you were interviewing somebody. So what we can do is tar refine our process of recruitment. 
There's a lot of guilds that just recruit in trade chat. And sometimes that works if you're definitely trying to build a guild in terms of size, but that doesn't always work in terms of finding the right players for your guild. What we've done is on exilepower.com establish a very comprehensive application. Now, applications are definitely more like the BC mindset where you were trying to make it into a top 40 guild and there was just so many people around that uh, there was a lot of applications, there were a lot of bodies to get through. But what the application does is it really allows us to target in on the players that fit the mold of Exile Power. And that's going to cause a lot less stress down the line and we're going to find a lot more like-minded people. Okay, But with your current team in mind, there's things that you can do to get everybody to be like-minded. Look, sometimes we don't have the time to wait for 10 more people that are the same as yourself to start raiding. Sometimes you have to go with the team you have. And what that means is you need to have open discussions outside the raid and cultivate team discipline. That means explaining your thought process, right? Leading by example. It means working with the raiders in your guild to be where you think the raid team should be. Now, it should be a group effort. It should be an open discussion and a group effort. There's very little that happens in Exiled Power that the rest of the guild doesn't know about. And if it is, it's stuff that we think will push the guild forward. We like to get input on most of the issues that we cover. But at the end of the day, we're the leaders because we have established effective leadership and we want to push the guild forward. Remember, if you're a leader, it's all about being selfless. It's not about being selfish. There's nothing in it for you other than your guild succeeding. And that should be the end goal. But going back to the motivation versus discipline thing, once we get to that end goal, that's when you let yourself relax. That's when you let the emotions and the outward feelings come out. While we're in the moment, while we're in the raid environment, while things are happening, we need to be disciplined. Now, remember, it's not like work. We cannot pretend that there is a chain of command, even though there may be. Okay, we have to lead by example. That is the key to all of this, but effectively lead by example. In the digital realm, we are all truly equals and leadership has to be earned, okay? You don't just get it because of a title. Remember guys, motivation is fleeting and fickle. Think of it, think of it as a wind up crank, right? You, get, you wind up the crank and you get this burst of force. I've given plenty of two minute raid speeches. That we're like, come on guys, we're, we're 50 pulls in. We've got 10 more left before the night's over. We can do this. Okay, that's stressful. That doesn't work on a day-to-day -day basis. Building a relationship with your guild and building discipline within your guild is going to work a lot better. Think about discipline like an engine. Once you get it kick-started, it provides all of the energy you need. If Tuesdays and Thursdays my guild comes into um, the Emerald Nightmare in Legion and, and is ready to go, they know my leadership style, they know what I expect, they know what all the other officers expect, and they know their jobs and know how to do it efficiently, things are going to get done. So, motivation versus discipline. I hope you guys have found this a little bit uh, helpful to you. If you have, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, let me know if you like this video so I can continue to do these things. As we're putting out this content, I'm noticing, you know, we can put out a million guides and we know that's what you guys really want to look at. You want to look at guides, how to play your characters like Mythic Raiders, but we want to create some kind of unique atmosphere to share our thoughts, share our experience with you guys. I thought this would be a great video to share some of my disciplines, share some of my beliefs with all of you. So just remember, motivation is trying to feel like doing stuff, right? If I'm sitting here and I say, man, I really got to farm 500 things. All right, I got to get myself pumped up. All right, I'm going to put on some music. I'm going to get a soda and I'm just going to start pumping myself up. Well, if I'm disciplined doing that, you don't have to feel a thing because you're already doing it, right? Discipline is doing it even if you don't feel like it. Every morning, I don't want to wake up at 9.30 or 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock, but I do it because I'm disciplined. That is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Motivation is fleeting. Don't latch on to it as a day-to-day -day thing. Discipline will give you guys the energy and the consistency to get through an expansion. Working with your Raiders, being like-minded, being on the same page, and having open and effective leadership with the entire guild. I hope you guys have found this one uh, helpful. If you want to see another video, send us a like, send us a subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. This is Big Kodiak. We'll see you next time. Take care.